Sammy Cup and welcome to another episode here for the Funky Pod Mindful Media and Communication. I'm already struggling with the intro because I'm scared you're gonna cancel me. Because today we talk about cancel culture. Oh yes, cancel culture, or as some might wanna call it 21st century witch trials where the twitches, witches, twitches, witches have Twitter, no, X accounts. Not anymore. <laughs> In the universe of like social phenomena, cancel culture is like the dark matter. Like it's omnipresent yet very elusive. Like what actually is it, right? So why do some people get canceled quicker than your Amazon Prime delivers? Ah, Prime Day coming up. So let's unroll this this intricate tapestry that it is, like which is filled with, let's be honest, virtue signaling. Yeah, Twitter slash X mobs and those deliciously, I know, volatile currencies of public opinion. Now well, let's strap in and let's try to figure out what's cancel culture? How does it work? So first, out of business in this regard, what on earth is cancel culture? It, you can think of it as like a hybrid between a social media tribunal and reality, reality TV. Yeah, I think it works. Like dramatic, judgmental, and super entertaining. <laughs> if if you're into that sort of thing, that is. But who's not? So it's not merely an online coliseum. It's more like a, a digital survivor series <laughs> wrestling reference where the loser gets voted off the island of public opinion. Right? We don't like you. You're out. Leave. And there are a few media theories that 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 tap into that that's why it, that's why it works so well okay one of being the two-step flow theory we talked about this one before right it's like it dates back to the 40s at, um, and i wrote down i always forget the names it's paul let me check lazarsfeld and uh iluhi katz uh, lazarsfeld katz came up with the theory first two-step flow and this theory suggests that information flows in two steps right so first the media discharged discharged it in towards an opinion leader or an influencer. Um, and these people then, they sift, curate, feed it to the general public. So essentially, it means that, that your cool friend, Tim, who always knows what's up, might have more sway over you than, than CNN. Might not be the worst thing. So it's Tim's two-step flow, Tim's interpretation that molds your opinion, okay? In the realm of cancel culture, these middlemen can be like... The arbiters of like doom or redemption, right? And Tim was just an example for like any middleman, any influencer that you follow, any news anchor that you trust, for example, and whatnot, any celebrity that, that you that you blindly follow and trust and so on, okay? Another theory, we also talked about this before, the filter bubble theory, right? It was coined by um, Eli Pariser, I believe. I forgot to write down the name on my notes. I slipped up there. Apologies. But I think that was the first one who coined the term. Um, this, this filter bubble theory posits that personalization, like algorithms, they kind of like encase us in bubbles. Right? We talked about this in many episodes before. Like in those bubbles, in those bubbles, we have like similar opinions. That's why we're in those bubbles. So if you ever cancel someone in your head, chances are everyone in your bubble has two. They're like, hey, hey, you're in my bubble. Did you cancel that person too? <laughs> As we're joking a little bit, but that's kind of like how it works, right? Because you're all sharing a similar mindset. So, and being in those bubbles, right? Those bubbles, they solidify your, your pre-existing beliefs and frankly make us more rigid than, than tolerant, like more intolerant, actually. Yeah, they amplify the feeling that we're on the right side thereby justifying actions like canceling someone, for example. Yeah, one of my favorite examples, because I don't always agree with them, but it's just, it's just a nice example. Let's take Jordan Peterson, for example, right? If you don't know Jordan Peterson, Google Jordan Peterson. Not, I, and I'm not saying I, I like the guy. Actually, I don't, or I disagree, or I agree. So I disagree on a lot. I agree on a few things. I disagree with a lot of things that he says. Um, but he's been through the cancel culture ringer for lots of his controversial stances on political correctness, gender pronouns, you name it. Okay, some media outlets, they, they, they lionize him as like this free speech matter 
uh, while others demonize him as like this alt right enabler. Okay, so he's like a he's like a real life Rorschach test for how you view cancel culture itself. Look at Jordan Peterson. What do you see? Terrible person should be I don't know cancel for life or like no macho who's really for free speech. That's the Rorschach test right there. Okay, and. While cancel culture is always like has this, this negative, I don't know, yeah, feeling to it. I mean, there must be a reason why we cancel so many people, right? So I think there's the good, the bad, and maybe even the uh, canceled. Um, so let, let's let's talk about this too, the good and the bad, right? Um, and for for this to do to to do this, let's let's set aside the pitch rocks for just a second, okay? For just for a second. And let's jump into this gray area somewhere in between. Like cancel culture isn't just about labeling someone as good or bad. It's, it's more nuanced because life is more nuanced than that, right? It's about like a collective moral bargaining, if you will, where we all, we all chip in our two cents and somehow we arrive at a, at a common verdict. And the theories that, rely, that, that relate to that are... Um, I, a few that we talked about before as well. One being the, so, the social responsibility theory, okay? And to talk about this, we circle back all the way to 1947. Tough time as a German. <laughs> Got too soon, I'm sorry. Um, yeah, in, in, in 1947, the, they came up with the social responsibility theory. Still applies to this day. Let me explain why, right? So this theory says um, media has a duty to provide balanced and accurate representation, I wrote it down, of news for the common good. Uh -huh. But what happens when the common good itself becomes disputed, um, disputed territory, if, if we cannot agree on what's the common good? In cancel culture, we see the contentious nature of what constitutes this, this public, this common good. Hmm. Okay, it's something to think about, I think. Another theory related to that, we talked about it like in almost every episode, the agenda setting theory, right? Media not only reports news, but also sets public agendas. We know that by now. So when mainstream media decides to spotlight cancel culture, it becomes a topic du jour, okay? And because we're talking about it, we're also co-creating the narrative. We keep talking about it. Either we amplify it or we, re or we resist it. Yeah, this, this cancellation du jour. Yes, trying to use those few French words I know. Um, example, if you remember, like a few years back, the term microaggression was like huge. And it wasn't coined just yesterday, it was coined way back, and I did research just for you by, by um, psychiatrist Dr. Chester M. Pierce in the 70s, but only recently, like a few years ago, it resurfaced and spread like wildfire, right? Thanks to, thanks to the media spotlight. And now it's more or less if you're in the media part of your daily vernacular, and yes, the people get canceled for it. That's agenda setting. That's also moral panics. We talked about this before as well. And so oh, no, people are so aggressive and so on. Right? Even if you, and I'm not, I'm not saying it's a good thing, but if you're, if you're like making a slightly racist joke towards your friend, because with friends you do that, right? This could be seen as a microaggression. And people, I, I live in Thailand, I'm German. C clearly, I'm not from here, right? People make fun of me all the time. And of course, it happens the other way around too. I make fun of my Asian friends as well, because here I don't have to be scared that I get canceled for it. If, I would, if we would share the jokes that we make, like when we at the boxing gym, for example, we might get canceled if, if those jokes make it on the air, for example, right? Because they're microaggressive, which they're not meant to be. So... Yeah, it's 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 a it's a very very interesting time we're in, I believe. And the media obviously put us into that role, right? Um, and yeah, well, I have to we have to talk about like how the media is responsible or partly responsible for it. It's the elephant in the room, if if you're honest, right? Um, actually, it's not the elephant; it's the, the puppet master. Actually, the media. Okay, so the media is like the the the, the people who not only report on cancel culture, but very often instigate it. They're like those reality TV producers who know just when to cue like this dramatic music. Oh, something's going to happen. Okay. And a few theories that, that, that again relate here. Uh, one is the framing theory that we also talked about before. Um, that's like the sociological concept 
that now meets mass communication. Okay, the media can frame a story and in a myriad of ways, like tragic, comedic, heroic, villainous. Yeah, that, that's what the, the 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 main ways. So one person's cancellation can either be framed as a righteous purge or a witch hunt. Which side you're on? Another one could be, we talked about this also many times, spiral of silence theory, right? You remember that one? The theory explains why most people are so afraid to voice unpopular opinions. Yeah, because you're like, oh, all my, all my other friends, people in my circle, they, they think this one thing. I'm not going to go against it. Okay, I'm scared to go against it. So if you think you view against the majority, that the fear of isolation makes you keep quiet. You cancel yourself. It is theory explains why even those who disagree with cancel culture might not speak up because they're like, oh, I don't want to argue, you know, whatever. Oh, let's just cancel Jordan Peterson, right? Um, you know, coming back to this example, because he's just, he's just the poster child of for media framing. Okay? And again, I'm not his friend. We don't even know each other, obviously. And I disagree with many things that he's saying. But that depending on which news outlet you read, he's either the, the staunch defender, like I said earlier, for free speech or like the problematic figure advocating for hate speech. It's so different. It's crazy. Yeah? This is a classic example of how media framing dictates public perception. You're taking someone complex, because we're all complex. We all have different thoughts, right? So taking someone complex and reducing them to the flat, digestible caricature, if you will. And that's not fair. And again, not, don't even like the guy. Don't know the guy. But it's not fair to do this to anyone. Mm -hmm. So there the last 10 minutes or so and we're keeping it shortish this time because the, the more time I spend, the, the higher the likelihood I get cancelled. <laughs> and the last episode or the, the second but last episode on uh, Israel was just so long and it got me so sad. I don't want to be sad this, uh, as sad this week, which is hard looking at social media, but trying to be less sad this week. Next week, then the hardcore detailed deep dive uh, into um, a few topics again so but let, let me let me wrap things up okay let me conclude so we, we we traversed like this very slippery slope right now of cancel culture last 10 minutes and unearthed like a few theories that relate to it right um, we talked about the champions of cancel culture we talked about some of the casualties of can the cancel culture and gotta remember that this is not just an isolated phenomenon okay it's not just happened once or twice it's really interwoven into the fabric of our society like we judge we cancel and the media doesn't just mirror our society anymore. And it you, yeah, the news in particular were thought to mirror society so that we see what's happening in society. But now, media does not mirror society anymore. Think about it. That's also that's a, like one of the first media theories you learn in university. Media does not mirror society anymore. Media shapes society in a very impactful way. Okay. So we are all willing participants, like casual observers or, 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 or maybe even helpless pawns in this grand spectacle of how the media shapes society. The only time, and maybe your next tweet, oh no, post X video on TikTok will tell. Let's see about that. And yeah, let me know how, how do you feel about cancel culture? Maybe even if you're, if you're younger than me, if you're Gen Z, like how do you, you grow up with that stuff, right? I mean... Do you feel like that's all good? It's good that people are super hyper aware? Or do you think, come on, sometimes it's just too much? How do you, how, how, how is it if you're a millennial, if you're even older, if you're 10X or something? Like, how do you feel about cancel culture? Let me know. Uh, was it all better back then when no one had social media? Let me know in the comments um, at Funkitpod on social media, Funkitpod at gmail.com. Uh, yeah, it would be cool if you leave a review, like, share, subscribe, share with friends that you canceled, that you don't want to get canceled by. Let them know your feelings. Let me know your feelings. Until next time, if you don't cancel me, take care, stay safe. Sorry, cow. Oh.